shrinkable Ant-Man is here with a game in which you shrink, and that game is Fantastic Voyage for your Atari 2600. So let's go ahead and take Fantastic Voyage, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Fantastic Voyage was published by Fox and carries the copyright year of 1982. This game is based in part on their 1966 movie of the same name. It was programmed by David Lubar, who also programmed the Atari 2600 pinball game Bumper Bash, which I reviewed in episode 386. I'll put a link to that review in the description below. The manual opens with the following. The objective. You and your submarine are to be injected into the bloodstream of a critically ill patient. Your mission is to blast your way through several phases of artery obstacles and destroy a life-threatening blood clot. Fantastic Voyage is a vertically scrolling shooter for one player only with six game variations which comprise of three difficulties which can contain extended sections. For the controls, you hold down the button to fire and use the joystick to move, pressing up to go faster and down to go slower. The TV type switch can be used to pause the game. On the bottom of the screen is a heartbeat meter of your patient. As time goes on, whenever you crash into something, whenever you shoot something you're not supposed to, and if you allow certain things to pass you, the patient's heartbeat will go up. If it goes too high, it can eventually flatline, ending your game. Fantastic Voyage is comprised of several sections. Throughout the sections, you could sometimes find enzymes that kind of look like keys. If you shoot one, your patient regains health. If you touch an artery wall, a tiny antibody will be released. If you let this pass you, it will weaken the patient. In the first phase, you can shoot defense cells that look like arrows that go from side to side for points. It is safe to let them pass. Phase 2 introduces blob-like blood cells. These are beneficial to the patient, so you want to avoid shooting them or crashing into them, otherwise you will harm the patient. Phase 3 shows up after you take care of the blood clot for the first time. This introduces bad bacteria that look like the Petra enemies from the original Legend of Zelda. They take three hits to destroy and harm the patient if they pass you, although if you damage them before they pass you, they won't hurt the patient as much. Phase 4 starts showing up after you take care of two blood clots. It features a mix of defense cells, blood cells, and bacteria. Phase 5 features a narrow passageway to navigate. Phase 6 is the final phase. In it, you must avoid indestructible small clotlets until you reach the main blood clot itself. If you run into the main blood clot, you and the patient die. You must shoot it 15 times. Do so and you return to the first phase at increased difficulty. You also get bonus points for completing this phase. The better the patient's health, the more points you get. The counter on the bottom right keeps track of how many clots you have taken care of. Graphically speaking, even though all the characters are white, I like the look of the game, including the look of the various objects and how the background color changes with the phases. Sound and music wise, the game sounds are pretty basic, but the heartbeat meter sound is well done, although some might find it annoying due to its constant use in the game. Family friendly wise, even though this might be the bloodiest game on the 2600, wink wink, the game would most likely get an E for everyone rating if released today. Currently at PriceCharting.com, the game has a value of $9 loose, $23 complete, and $51 new. So what did I think of Fantastic Voyage? Not only did this game surprise me, it ended up being one of my favorite shooters on the system. Now it seems I might be in the minority, judging by the game's reputation online, but my guess is that part of this is due to the game's setup. Simply shooting everything will hurt you. You need to know what to hit and what to avoid, which kind of makes sense considering the medical connection to the game. And the heart meter could have been clearer, but simply going by the sound of the heartbeat added some nice tension to the game, and some of the bacteria seemed impossible to hit, but I like how the game controlled in the variety of phases. I also like the strategy element and how despite being a single life game, you could make mistakes but still have a chance to keep on going. Overall I just had fun with the game and could easily play it again. So where am I going to rank Fantastic Voyage? Surprisingly high. I'm looking in the 20s. I do like Berserk more at 27, but I will put this over the Fun Tapper at 28. So out of the 211 games I'm now ranked for the Atari 2600, Fantastic Voyage is entering the artery at the 28 position. Fantastic Voyage has a learning curve, but one that's worth learning for fans of 2600 shooters. But that is only my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. 
follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter, click the bell so you don't miss any future videos, and sign up at patreon.com slash nosweargamer just like dude Michael did to support the show and gain access to exclusive perks. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care and remember, if a bacteria has an eye, it's probably a bad bacteria.